Thanks for the introduction. So hi, everyone. Uh, I'm still Xavier. Uh, he's already said everything. Uh, if you want my Twitter handle, it's right here. I'm also part of the Google Developer Experts program from Google. So that doesn't mean I've actually sold my soul to Google. And I'm not speaking in Google's name. But um, it's a really cool program from Google that allows me to speak at such conferences and recognize our expertise. So you also have some of our Google Developer Experts here. I see actually one here. Yeah, he doesn't want to be named yet. It's morning for him. So how about pro optimization? So here's a short agenda. I mean, we've got 20 minutes. So enough time to read it. First time, you need to understand how your devices are consuming power. And so today's, at least Android devices, they are really complex systems. They are not like a simple big computer, you just run a program on it. It's alone on it. I mean, there is barely a, an OS. Now, here with Android, you've got display, input devices, sensors, touch screens. Um, several layers of connectivity, 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, you've got cameras, you've got CPU, GPU, and RAM, like, as usual, and you also have different um, forms of storage, and you have hardware decoders, and you have specific power subsystems, so battery and charging system. So it's not as easy as it could be and to understand what is happening on your device and what is actually consuming power. And it's even harder to see what software is actually causing uh, uh, power consumption. But battery life is really one of the main complaints uh, from users, as said here, but I mean, for, it's a complaint for everyone, developers too. And so we need to do things for it, and it's complicated to to see why, uh, what we should do. And plus, we always want better devices that run faster, with a brighter screen. With Basically, we want better battery, but we want to ruin the battery life at the same time by wanting thinner devices. That's just crazy. And no one could apply more slow uh, to battery capacity yet. Far from it. The only law we, we managed to get into battery is like, yeah, make larger batteries. <laughs> That's why we invented six inches phones, just to fit a bigger battery and keep it thinner. <laughs> so there is also already a lot of <coughs> power optimization done uh, at the operating system level. So if you look at the application's lifecycle, um, if your application is not in the foreground, it will be paused. Um, you can still have background services. Um, but, and then, in background services, you need to acquire uh, way clocks, so to be able to use the CPU for a long time, even if your app isn't used. So that already saves battery, because not all your apps are running at the same time by nature. There are already also initiatives from Google, so they call it Project Volta. They mentioned it at least one year ago. So. Um, Battery optimization for the Android developers at Google, it's, yeah, Project Volta. That means it's not just something you would put on top of Android and that would fix all the thing. Uh, it's really a project that needs to work across all the ecosystem of what Android uh, is. So um, the framework needs to be optimized, the kernel needs to be optimized. And finally, all this isn't enough applications have to be optimized too. And you can always find an application that will ruin the whole experience you have on your device. I will not tell any name. <laughs> so applications have to be optimized for power as well. But what's using power? So of course, the screen is using power, but uh, there isn't much things you can do about it. There are technologies like OLED that allows only the um, pixels you use to be uh, lightened up, but yeah, in any case, that's not really on the application side that you can fix a lot uh, on, on there. But yeah, you know, I try to find some numbers. Uh, I think it, it can vary between devices and so on, but still, it gives you gives you a rough idea. So 
usually what consumes the most is network. So anytime you transfer data and uh, or big chunks or not, if it's just for ads or even analytics, in any case, all this is consuming power. Then goes location and sensors. Of course, can ob obvious when you use the GPS, it consumes power. If you use some sensors, some sensors are consuming more power than others. I'll tell you which ones uh, later in this presentation. And lastly, CPU is consuming power, but it's uh, not really not as much as network or or other stuff. It's uh, it's less important, but still. So. To optimize on the CPU side, your code has to be more efficient and to do some actual useful work, like avoid to copy and sort 10 times the same structures. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not good. And so you can also fix what you're doing on the CPU side. And uh, even if your code is beautiful, that doesn't mean it will necessarily work well on the platforms. Uh, that's quite a sad story, actually. <laughs> but that, that's why on Android, for example, when you optimize, you, you don't have like a big object-oriented arborescence with like seven inheritance on the object and so on. You need to keep things simple. But if you want to optimize, you need to measure first. So. You can measure with wall plug. No, in fact, you can't really do that with an Android device. Um, hardware data acquisition on power is just complicated, expensive, and plus, we're software developers. How can we make for, um, how can we know what exact part of our software is actually using the power if we are just measuring the throughput on the board? It's way hard. So, but luckily, we've got good software solutions. Uh, it's a bit indirect, so it's really hard to get actual uh, power consumption numbers. But honestly, you don't really need, need these numbers. Um, you need to monitor a lot, many components. So um, what's going on on the CPU, what's going on uh, kernel, uh, the interrupts, so on, and what your app is doing at the same time. And so when you do measurements, you measure on the actual device with with other apps on it, at least the frameworks, apps, and so on. So when your applications are not sitting alone on Android devices, they are integrated with the system, you've got content providers, you've got service running in background, you've got a lot of stuff going on, plus other apps are also using the device and may impact how your applications performs too. So actual numbers are hard to get, but you can always go and optimize and see what you're doing wrong using tools. So of course, at Intel, we've got some cool tools. They are mainly targeting OEMs. So one is Intel Energy Profiler. So it allows you to see what process is using what part of the platform. Um, it's part of Intel System Studio. It's not free for everyone. Um, for open source projects, usually it's OK. For academic research, usually it's OK. But in any case, you need specific devices. You can rebuild the OS for, and uh, or simply Intel development platforms. You also get other tools. So the most useful tool uh, has been released with Lollipop. It's called Battery Historian. Whoever who used Battery Historian in the room once? Not many. That's a shame. <laughs> Because you, you should really use it at least once uh, with your applications. But that's the tool that allows you to understand that your application is doing something that is wrong. So one year ago, it was uh, released 1.0. Um, and it's not, maybe not well known because, I mean, there have been not that many advertisements on it. So if you look, it, it's not part of Android Studio itself or whatsoever. Uh, it's on Google's GitHub accounts. and. In one auto release, it was just a Python script, no README. So yeah, maybe that's why you didn't use it. <laughs> it's, uh, it was maybe a little bit too uh, minimalistic. In any case, <clears throat> uh, to use Battery Historian, you just get a bug report from your device using ADB bug report. So after you run your app on the device for like some time, 30 minutes, one hour, three hours for us, to see how it interacts with the system. And then you run the Python script, giving 
uh, your bug report and it will generate an HTML uh, report. You can see one on the right side. As anyway, last week, because Google I.O., there is uh, to that O version. Big improvement, they put a README. Uh, and however, uh, it's not just a Python script anymore. It has dependency on Go, Python, Git, Clojure Compiler, and basically the internet. Uh, because yes, you, um, it creates a local web server, but you need access to resources that are remote, like jQuery and many libs. So yeah, it's a bit painful to install all of it, but it's worth the pain. Because from previous battery historian, um, the metrics are easier to read. You can filter on your application, which is more than useful. And let's do a quick demo. So get a script to launch the web server, actual web server. It should pop up soon-ish. In the meantime, who is using Windows here in the room for Android development? Quite many people. So they released uh, the um, Getting Started Guide only for Linux. And uh, you had to do some fix to, to, to make it work on Windows. Uh, I'll publish a post later. And I'll include a slide in the end of my presentation to, give you, to tell you how, how you can install it and run it on Windows. It's not that complicated. So here's the web server. So you can upload a bug report. Let's submit. And here's Battery Historian. So it, it will give you like um, um, stats on the overall behavior of your device, um, how much time uh, <coughs> it, it has been running, um, it was sleeping, uh, it has been charging, discharging, uh, what consumes the most, so like Wi-Fi, screen, and so on. A list of wake locks from uh, the various applications. And the most interesting part, of course, is Historian 2.0. So it's much better than the previous um, battery Historian if you used it. So <coughs> you see the rate of discharging of your device uh, over time. So if it's changing at one point, you can look down and to see what was running. If it was because of uh, CPU use, or maybe the screen was on, or uh, Wi-Fi was on, or um, reception was uh, bad, you can see our signal strength. So if you're in an area, you are always switching between 3G and, and GSM. It just ruins the battery life. You can't do much about it. And you can see the list of uh, wake locks at any times. So wake locks are objects, applications, and services are using to keep the CPU awake to do some work while the user is actually not using your application. So that's what basically runs, uh, ruins battery life, along with all the data transfers. And then you can go on uh, application statistics, and then you need to choose an application. Um, I need to decide again which one I want to show. <laughs> So there is an app, for example. I hope Cyril, uh, who developed the app, will not blame me for choosing him. <laughs> so we can uh, see how much that has been transferred by the app uh, over the time it has been used, how many times it requested uh, syncs, so using a sync provider. So two times, and it lasted seven seconds, which is quite much, actually, seven seconds. And you see all the wake clocks when they've been acquired. So and the duration of them. So it keep, kept the CPU awake for like 9 milliseconds sometimes, 100 milliseconds several times. And the sync part uh, was the most um, battery consuming part with more than two seconds. That's quite all right, but the sync could be uh, improved. And you see the services and finally the processes. So if any number here goes too big, that Thing, that uh, means there is a problem here. And, but here is quite fine. It's very good to have such an overview from, from the report with uh, the, the amount of data that is transferred and so on. Anyway, we go back to her. <coughs> so, right, so I invite you really to use it on your app at least once uh, to get an idea of what's going on with your app because 
as it's not just by looking at your code that you can guess what's happening and if it's uh, problematic for battery life. Anyway, so you should get an overview of your app and so on. So, but what wrong stuff have you done so, so it consumes battery? So first of all, you need to understand how the network layer works on Android, especially on 3G and 4G. So for example, on 3G and 4G, each time you do a request, like I want data, then <coughs> the, the modem of your phone will go in a high state do a transfer, and once the transfer is done, it will not go to idle in instantaneously. It will wait, just in case. And it doesn't matter if your transfer was huge or just small. In any case, it will have put the modem into high power state, and it will stay for, uh, in still quite high power state for at least 15 seconds, and maybe more. It depends on the providers. And that's a lot to, to keep your de device modem awake because it consumes like at least 10 times the power it needs than when uh, it's in idle mode, even more than that. <clears throat> so it's like sleep deprivation. If you wake up every 10 minutes uh, as a human, uh, you, you'll become crazy quite quick. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> you'll need to really have a good sleep some, someday. So the things you can use uh, on your apps <clears throat> to avoid waking up the old platforms just for one small packet all the time and cause the sleep deprivation are, first of all, um, alarm manager. So if you just set an alarm now, if you're targeting uh, OS later than KitKat, uh, that's OK. Your timer will be aligned with other timers from other applications. So it will naturally optimize, so it will coalesce uh, the timers, so it will consume less power. Because all the apps will get the da data at the same time, so the useless idle time from the modem will be uh, shorter. It will happen less times, less often. On Alarm Manager, you can also call set inexact repeating, so the same. Um, since it's inexact, it will again be able to be aligned with other timers from our platforms. And this API has been available for a long time. <coughs> I don't remember the exact API level, but should be able to use it. And you can also use the sync adapters. So sync adapters are um, Android specific sync adapters, and they are woken up by the system. They can be woken up by the system, so the system will choose to wake these up at the right time. And there is even better than you can use, it's the job scheduler. So job scheduler API is only available starting with Lollipop, but it allows you to do really um, good things for battery because you can set an alarm, but you can ask for this alarm to require charging. So it's just awesome to be able to, get, to do uh, work only when the device is actually plugged in to anywhere. You can uh, set requires idles uh, also on network or also an execution window. And if you want to use job scheduler style API for before API level 21, you can use GCM Network Manager that provides a fallback. There is GCM in the name, but it doesn't require GCM. <laughs> it only requires Google Play services. Anyway, overall, um, here's a chart of how much uh, power is consumed by data transfers. And it depends on the technologies and also the amount of data. But in any case, it's better to prefetch, to, so to get maximum of data, but still not too much uh, from time to time than just asking for new data all the time. And yeah, batch data transfers as much as you can. And if you can schedule all your work at times, the device is just sitting up on the table, plugged in, that's perfect. I'll just go slightly faster, we'll be late. So for sensors, try to not to use them at their maximum. The gyroscope consumes like 10 times more power than the accelerometer, so prefer use of accelerometer if you can just use only an accelerometer. Avoid using the GPS if you can afford it. So by, for example, using passive provider, so you'll get data used by other apps or network provider. And you can also disable receivers when you don't need them. So the system will be not woken up if no one's asking for some intent. 
And finally, to optimize CPU usage, so race to idle is the main concept. So do a maximum of work and then go to idle. Don't do work like every, every second. And maximize data locality, so have efficient uh, data structures to maximize cache locality. Some of these things are hard to measure, but you can use, for example, VTune Amplifier. That's also part of System Studio. It's like an internal energy profiler. And it can tell you what the CPU said about your code. Like, it sucks. I've had to use so many clocks um, for executing your instructions because your data structures are wrong. You can use it this way. So, I know you don't get that many magic APIs that will do all the work for you, but for this battery historian, you can use to really analyze what your app is doing on the system. And the main concept with battery optimization is to batch when you can, to cache when you can, to avoid work when you can. That's also a good, <laughs> good way to, to don't waste battery. And to optimize and schedule everything you do properly. So it's really a, a state of mind, so you need to, to think about the impact of battery when you do something, but, uh, and you need to measure it. So we have the link to battery historian tools. If you want more material, there is Cole McEnlis, who is doing many videos, they're called Android Performance Patterns. So that's the guy here looking unhappy. Uh, it's because his device is depleted, I guess. So you can follow this link. I don't speak German, but I think that means that the end of the presentation or unrelated. It doesn't. It didn't mean anything. Thank you. <laughs> Was a little irritating and also annoying. I'm sorry about that.